Right, a good Wednesday morning to you. News 2 meteorologist Christian Morgan alongside with you at about 11 o'clock, giving you an update on Hurricane Milton. Of course, you say the hurricane around North Carolina right now, it does cause some panic. But I'll go ahead and tell you, despite what you may be seeing on the Internet or maybe hearing from folks, this storm is not headed to North Carolina. In fact, we don't have any tropical systems that are headed to North Carolina. So just to dispel some rumors there. But Hurricane Milton is a strong storm and it headed right into the west uh, coast of Florida later this evening. So let's give you an update on that. You can see it on our visible satellite image this morning. Still a very strong storm, but the one thing you see or don't see now that you saw yesterday was a very well defined eye of the hurricane. We sort of seen that shrink and go away over the course of the early morning hours. So that shows us that the storm is weakening. Sometimes when that happens, it undergoes what we call an eye wall replacement cycle. That means it weakens down and then has the opportunity to restrengthen over about the course of 12 to 18 hours. But right now this still is a category four hurricane as of the latest update at about 11 o'clock. So let's show you that as we get over here, moving our graphics a little bit. Here's what it looks like on satellite and we are starting to get some pictures of this on our radar that sits on land. Now it's still a bit far away, so sometimes the images aren't as clear as they could be. So we'll keep it on the satellite image here. But again, over the last several hours this morning, you see that eye, uh, eye starting to shrink. And so the storm is a little weaker, but this is still a very powerful, very strong category for, for hurricane. It does have winds of 145 miles per hour, and it also has picked up a little bit of forward motion, moving northeast at about 17 miles per hour. And one of the main things that's steering this hurricane is big blocking high pressure to our north and also an upper level area of low pressure or what we call a trough swinging through. And that's what's pretty much picking it up and kind of also picking up its speed this morning. About 160 miles west southwest of Fort Myers, Florida. And with these latest updates this morning, we've seen a little bit of a subtle shift to the south. So while this was originally maybe thinking about a direct impact, direct hit in Tampa, I think it's going to fall a little bit further south of that. So strong category four storm. Of course, last night, early this morning, we were talking about a category five hurricane at one point had 165 mile per hour winds. Now it has 140 seven mile per hour winds. And there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of folks asking the question of whether or not there's a category six hurricane or whether we'll introduce one because of Milton being so strong yesterday. And bottom line is no, there is no category six hurricane. And the reason for that is once you reach category five, if you have, a, have 150 mile per hour winds or 160 mile per hour winds, the damage really isn't going to be that different. Once you reach that level or that strength of a storm, the damage is going to be catastrophic, whether that's wind or whether that's water and flooding. Just bottom line, there's no reason to go to a category six because at that point, the impacts will be so devastating that doesn't really change. But this is a strong category four storm could be a category three or a category four as it comes on shore tonight in Florida, likely late tonight into very early tomorrow morning. You'll see hurricane watches and warnings are posted pretty much for the entire west coast of Florida. Tropical storm watches and warnings, of course, extend way farther outside of that all the way down into Miami off the coast of Florida. Some of those tropical storm watches and warnings even extend into Georgia and parts of South Carolina. That's mostly from some of the wind gusts that they'll get. The beaches of North and South Carolina aren't going to get any rain from Hurricane Milton though. Here's that latest track as of 11 o'clock, still a strong category four storm. It could weaken some more potentially to a category three before it makes landfall, likely somewhere between Tampa and Fort Myers, Florida. And if we're really nailing down that track even a little more specific, I think it's somewhere between Sarasota and Fort Myers. However, one thing we talk a lot about and we show you this all the time when there's hurricanes, we show you this cone of uncertainty. You notice how that is, sh is shrinking. But the one thing you have to remember is this is where the center of the storm could track. This is not where the impacts necessarily will be felt as they're felt well outside of the center of the storm. So there's still some wiggle room here. The center of the storm still could make a direct landfall in Tampa and along the bay, or it could also make a direct landfall near Fort Myers or a little bit south of that. So there's still some wiggle room here in the track and a track further to the north directly into Tampa, of course, would cause even bigger storm surge and bigger flooding impacts for the Tampa Bay region. A little further south track still going to cause some storm surge here, but it's a little bit better situation for those folks in Tampa Bay than it would be otherwise if it was a more northern 
northern track. Meanwhile, after it makes landfall here, it's going to continue due east pretty much across Florida as it continues to weaken. It's still a category one storm though as it moves out over the ocean and back out over water by tomorrow night and it will continue to weaken after that. So that's the main track on this still largely unchanged with very subtle shifts to the south over the last few updates. One thing we've been talking a lot about here is storm surge and that's going to be a really big concern on the on the west coast of Florida and we mentioned Tampa Bay a lot here that Again, storm surge forecast has shifted low a little further to the south with that subtle shift to the south in the track that we were talking about just a little while ago. And remember, storm surge here is not the rain that's falling from the storm. The storm surge is basic, basically the ocean, the ocean water that's getting pushed inland because of all the wind in this storm. Part of the big reason we talk about Tampa Bay a lot is the way the storm is moving and the way the winds are spinning as this storm moves in. It could actually suck a lot of the water out of the bay and then once the storm moves by, all of that water comes rushing back in. We've seen flooding problems like that happen in the Tampa Bay region time uh, after time again. But Tampa Bay still, I think, on the order of about 10 to uh, 5 to 10 feet of storm surge. A little further south of that, as you move towards Sarasota down to Fort Myers, those posts could be seeing 10 to 15 feet of storm surge, plus all of the rain that they're going to get from Milton. So this is going to be a big concern. The further north you get toward the panhandle, still two to four inches, uh, two to four feet of storm surge, I should say. And then, of course, on the other side, on the east coast of Florida, Daytona Beach, Orlando, Florida, Fort Pierce, those folks could see anywhere between three to five feet of storm surge. So bottom line, this is going to be a big time storm surge uh, system and problem for those folks, especially on the west coast of Florida, but even so on the east coast of Florida as well. Just a significant flash flood risk all across the Florida Peninsula, Peninsula, especially from Tampa up to Orlando. A little bit lower of a flash flood risk from Fort Myers to the south, Fort Pierce down to the south toward the tip of Florida and down into the Keys uh, like if you head toward Miami. But still, this bottom line, big flooding concern for those folks and a pretty high tornado risk across Florida Peninsula as well today. From Fort Myers up to Tampa all the way over to the east coast as well, we'll likely see several numerous tornado warnings and likely even a, a few confirmed tornadoes in that area as we go into this evening. I've also had a lot of questions about this. So if you say Milton's not coming to North Carolina, why? Because typically when we see a storm form here, it does make that northeast track and then it starts to turn north, right? That's where we start to see the worry and start to see the impacts here in the Carolinas. This time around, that's just not the case. And it is a little bit of an odd track, but here's why. We have fall air in place. We also have high pressure in place as well, and that's delivering to us dry air. But the other thing that it's doing is helps steer Milton away from us and right across Florida. You have to think about high pressure as basically a big blocking mechanism, right? Think about it in a, a lake or a stream. If you were to throw a big boulder, what happens? The water has to rush around that. And the same kind of uh, scenario is happening when you have high pressure in control. So this is really blocking it from moving any further to the north and helps push it right across Florida. We also have an upper level area of low pressure that's swinging through as well, and that helps to pick Milton up and steer it. That's also why I think we're seeing some increase in its forward speed and in its forward motion. Meanwhile, as you look across the southeast, we're dry in the Carolinas, but just a couple of high clouds along the North Carolina coast down into South Carolina and Georgia as well. Those clouds are a direct result from Milton. Even though we're not going to get rain here, those clouds are a direct result from that, and it may lend to a partly cloudy sky overnight and early tomorrow morning. Other than a few high clouds, we're not going to see any impacts here from Milton. You can see the rain already spreading in uh, across the Gulf and into the west coast of Florida. Some rain along the Florida Panhandle as well. And those heavier bands, those stronger first initial bands of Milton are going to start moving in throughout the day. You'll even see down to the south very far. There's already a couple of tornado warnings you know, on the southwest side of Florida. So something that we'll be watching as we go through today. Meanwhile, back in the Piedmont, our weather is largely unchanged from Milton. We have a lot of sunshine today. Started the morning out in the upper 40s for the first time since mid-May. Now midday, we're warming up into the mid 60s. Their 70s down to the south, but again, our source of the cooler air is up over Canada, and that's what will continue to fuel our fall feel. That high pressure continues to block Milton from moving any further to the north and giving us any fit at all. So it's just fall weather and high pressure in control of our of our area and of our weather. Milton, meanwhile, will move across Florida and then starts to move out 
as we go into tomorrow afternoon. So thankfully this is not a slow moving storm or uh, a storm that's going to sit over that area. It moves by pretty quickly, but still, of course, will leave a large swath of damage in its path. No doubt about that. For us, high pressure remains in control. Nice weather hangs in control as well and virtually no humidity for us to talk about for a while. We keep that crisp fall air around in the Piedmont on through the weekend and on into next week as well. So for today, plenty of sunshine. Low to mid 70s is where we'll end the day. And again, a couple of extra clouds potentially for the afternoon and evening into tonight. Mostly just high clouds, but those would be a direct result from Milton. We drop it back down to the upper 40s to near 50 overnight. And again, our weather heel, uh, still here is largely unchanged from Milton. Dry weather will continue for a while. Now it's going to be chilly here. Temperatures dip down into the 40s for the next several mornings. Be thinking about our folks up in Western North Carolina and in the mountains. If you're still trying to help or wanting to donate, those folks are going to be dipping down into the 30s for the next several nights. So as you're donating supplies, think warm. Think warm clothing, warm uh, anything to keep hands warm, to keep feet warm, to keep bodies warm. It's going to be cold up in the mountains, so they need cold weather supplies and will for the foreseeable future as we move deeper into fall and of course closer to winter. Uh, this will not be a quick cleanup or a quick recovery process in our mountains and likely not going to be one down in Florida after Milton moves by either. So back here in the Piedmont, dry weather continues. Chilly mornings, comfy afternoons are going to be the normal for quite some time.